Hi, I'm Lisa with Ivy Lane Interiors, and today's project is this Dixie. Now, a lot of my Instagram friends said they would not have bought this, but I saw the listing and I loved the lines of it and that integrated hardware. And so you can tell it has a really horrible paint job. The owner said he got it at an antique store, but when I brought it home, see that drawer, I stripped it and that's what did it for me that wood was incredible. So I just thought, you know what? I really want to go raw with this piece. And I know it was going to be kind of hard, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to try it. We're going to strip it and see what we have. I'm using Clean Strip Premium Stripper. You just apply it, let it do its thing, and then scrape it off. This one is a little smelly, so I'm to make sure that you use a respirator with it. Since I'm removing paint, I like to use acetone after the stripper to just kind of get off any additional residue. I use a paper towel, then I also like to switch for a light abrasive. This is kind of like a 3M pad, scotch Bright pad, something that gives you a little bit of friction so that you can get off that additional residue. Thank you. 
I like to use my carbide scraper in addition to this stripper. It just seems to really get down to raw very quickly and it eliminates a lot of the sanding that I need to do later. Now I'm going to give it a really nice rough sand with my sander. This is probably an 80 grit. So I go in, do a nice little rough sand, and then I'll go ahead and sand through the grits with my hand sanding. I'll do 120 and then I'll do 180. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the integrated hardware. I have stripped them, and now I'm gonna take them off, make sure I label them, and then they'll get the same treatment as the body. I love these little contouring pads. You just find whatever profile works for whatever you are sanding and then you can wrap your sandpaper around it and get into those crevices very easily. I had a few areas on the drawers that I needed to fill in. So I'm going to use quick wood, which is a wood epoxy. It's a two part system. You just simply break off some of it. You knead it together. You put it in the area that you're trying to fill. And then um, later on, I'll come back with a veneer patching kit and I'll paint it in and then cover all that up with a paint wash. The top was in pretty rough shape. I had a lot of scratches dings, I had staining, I had all kinds of things going on. So I'm going to start with a really good sand with 80 grit. Thank you. 
because I have so many stains on this, I'm going to go ahead and do a treatment with Barkeeper's Friend. I'm just going to make it into a paste. I'm going to apply it all over it, and I'm just going to try to help it get rid of some of the stains on the top. After I let that set a while, cleaned it all off, I'm cleaning it with a 50-50 mixture of denatured alcohol and water. You can see I still have a lot of like black areas. And so after that dried, I'm gonna go ahead and try a, a wood bleach. And so this is oxalic acid. You just mix it in with hot water and you apply it with a paintbrush. You let it set. You can kind of continue to do a few layers and then just let it do its thing. And so the combination of the oxalic acid and the barkeeper's friend should get rid of um, any kind of biological staining and or it'll also kind of help lighten it and so we'll see if this will do it after you've let it set then you're going to make sure that you rinse it really good three times so you want to get rid of all of that those crystals um, off of the wood surface The stripping removes most everything and so now I just need to go in with some sandpaper and do the final sanding. So sometimes you know the sander's great but there's areas that you're just going to have to use sandpaper for. I could use a Dremel. I have I have a Dremel but honestly I need to probably get a new one because mine is pretty aggressive and so I don't want it eating away at the wood. I probably need to get one a new one that has maybe a lower speed on it that would help me. So at this point it would be it's better for me just to hand sand um, because I don't want to do anything too aggressive. So because the whole thing is stripped to raw, I have decided to go ahead and do a paint wash on it. This is Algonquin by Fusion Mineral Paint. It's, you can use any kind of tan color you want, but I'm gonna do a ratio of one part paint to four parts water. So you can see the little cup that I have is right about um, an eighth of a cup. And so I'm just gonna do one of those and then I'm gonna do four waters. And I am gonna add a little bit of yellow acrylic paint. It just kind of helps get rid of any kind of weird undertones that might be in the wood. Good.
For the paint washes, you have to work pretty quickly. I'm using a fan brush by Zebra. It's a really good paint brush to use for this because it holds a lot of paint. So I'm just gonna kind of start in the middle and I'm just gonna kind of work my way to the, to the edges. Then I'm gonna come back with a lint-free cloth and I'm just going to wipe back the excess. You want to do nice long strokes because if you stop it'll kind of show where you've stopped. I'll try to make sure that my rag isn't real wadded up. I try to make sure that it's somewhat flat because that way it really helps when I'm smoothing everything out. Because this piece had all of the black overspray on it from the first paint job, I decided just to use the paint wash on the interior parts that had the overspray. I'm just going to fill it in with the tan paint wash and I'm not going to wipe it away, I'm just going to leave it. So you see how I'm kind of folding my lint-free rag? You want to make sure that it doesn't have a lot of crinkles in it because if you stop somewhere, you see how like I stopped right there? Well, that if that's how it would dry, you'd see that. And so you want it to really be smooth. 
So if you have any hiccups like I did there, you just go back over it. You've got a couple minutes. You can you can even apply a little bit of uh, like a spray. Like if you have a mister, you can spray some water on it and that will kind of extend the time that you have to work on it. Now I'm gonna use a veneer painting kit and I'm just gonna fill in those areas that I use quick wood on. Now this is just, I'm just trying to kind of get it close to the wood surrounding it. And then I'm going to go over it with a paint wash. So it doesn't have to be perfect, but I just need it to blend in. So these, this is just kind of me experimenting with what colors work. Sometimes you just have to use, I usually start with a, a light color and then I build and I go darker from there. So. Um, I'm going to do a little bit on this one. I'm going to let it dry. I'll go to the next drawer and then come back and finish this one up.
Okay, once it's dried, it's looking pretty good, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do a paint wash over it just to make sure everything gets blended in. You'd be surprised that paint wash can really help blend all those colors in. I'm ready to finish the dresser. I've let it set for a couple days and I'm not exactly sure what I want to do. Um, there's a few areas, um, obviously it was in really rough shape. There's a few areas that are a little uneven just because of issues I had with it. And uh, I've tried to kind of mask that with the paint wash, but I feel like I need to tone it in order to kind of blend everything in. And I kind of want to darken it a little bit to make it a little richer. So. I have two options. I can either tone it with dye stain mixed with my top coat, or I could try General Finish's Glaze Effects. I have the Van Dyke Brown, and I could um, use that as well to kind of give it a nice glaze. So um, I think I'm gonna go with the toning with the dye stain. I have light brown. I'm gonna mix it with my top coat. So let's go. After the first coat, I felt like the dresser was still too light. So I'm going to mix up a new toner and I'm gonna to switch to using medium brown. I feel like it needs to be a little darker and I think my, um, my toner wasn't strong enough last time. So I've done some math and I'm using one cup of matte polyurethane and I can use 10 to 20% of the toner. And so 10% of one cup would be about 1.6 tablespoons because there's 16 tablespoons um, in a cup. And so um, I think I used like one teaspoon before. And so I was, uh, I need to about triple it um, to get what I want. So, um, I'm just, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm gonna triple it because I don't wanna go too dark either. So I may start at, um, I may start at two teaspoons and see how dark that is. And then I might go up to a tablespoon, but I'm just gonna kind of test it to see, um, cause I can go darker. I just, you know, it's hard to reverse it. You know, I don't wanna go too dark. Um, so I may just kind of level up as I go and do a couple layers of toner instead of just trying to go dark right away. So that's kind of what I'm thinking.
I'm tongue at the top of the Dixie, and after a couple coats, I came out to the garage, and one spot on it literally bubbled up and was resisting the water-based top coat and dye stain. So there's obviously something on the top that is resisting it. Now, when I was stripping it, I did notice it was, a, it was really dark, and I did one round of Barkeeper's Friend and one round of oxalic acid. Usually that gets like, you know, any kind of bleaching of the wood and then any contaminants, cleaned it with denatured alcohol. That didn't cover it. So it did not, this is the area, did not want to take any kind of stain. So what I did is I stripped it all down, just the top, and um, I went ahead and did spray shellac on it. That will seal in anything that might be resisting the finish. And then I went ahead yesterday and did a tan wash over it. And then today I'm going to proceed with the toning. So we'll see if it works. I feel like I'm in my era of flops. <laughs> Just kidding. But this Dixie, um, sometimes, you know, you do a piece and you think you have this vision of what you think it should be. And um, I've had some problems with it. And I'm part of me is just like, why didn't I just stain it dark? <laughs> this is what happened. So it was looking really good. And I spray sealed it with uh, um, a, my, an oil polyurethane. I don't know what happened, but I had a couple splotches on it after it dried. Don't really know why. The only thing I did different was wash it off or clean it off before I sprayed it with a tack cloth, which I don't typically use, but I have um, read that it can cause some of the oil to interact. And so I really just should have used um, my microfiber bag, which I normally use. <laughs> But that's the only thing I can think of that might have caused some of the blotches because honestly, it was on the front, on the top. I had to sand those areas down. Well, the problem was I use a very high grit, but when I sanded it in two little areas right here, took off the finish. <laughs> and this is a built up finish. So this is a tan wash. This is just a couple layers of toner. Tried to fix it, but it's very difficult to finish, to, to try to match a built up finish. So you know what? It's getting um, scraped off again, and we're gonna go again because the body looks good. Um, so I'm gonna match it. So I'm gonna scrape it off today, sand it back down, and paint wash it, tone it, and then hopefully it will be ready. We shall see. Drawer liners means that we are towards the end of this project. We are almost finally there. I didn't have the heart to do a very long portion on the drawer liners, so you're going to get a little time lapse on this one because this has been an exhausting 
process of this video. But let's take a look back at the before where we started. Here I was so confident that this was going to turn out really cute. I don't know. I think some of my Instagram friends might have been right. This might have been one that um, I don't know that I would have taken on in hindsight, but I definitely probably would have tried a different finish because gosh, that was really difficult. So many things, you know, sometimes with vintage pieces, you just don't know what's hiding underneath there. But see, that's the drawer that got me in trouble. That was a beautiful wood. And I was just so determined to do it. But what do you think? Here's the after. Can you believe how beautiful it turned out? That top, look at that. I had to redo that three times. But we got it. I think it's gorgeous. I, I don't know. What do you think? Do you love it? Do you think I should have painted it? Do you think I should have just gone dark? Probably. That would have been a whole lot easier. But wow. You know, this this oil-based, I don't do a lot of oil-based stuff, but um, this oil-based um, polyurethane, I think it really makes it rich. Um, there's something about oil. It just deepens and makes that rich finish. I think it's beautiful. The integrated hardware. <laughs> That's what did me in when I saw it. I love integrated hardware. I just think it's beautiful. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Would you have done this one? Would you have tackled this project? I don't know. I'm going to list it for $800. I think it's worth it. We'll see if it sells. I don't know. But that's what I'm going to list it for. And so I will keep you updated and let you know what it actually sells for. So thanks so much for watching. Tell me what you think in the comments.